This year, Porsche celebrates 75 years. And I have never ever owned a Porsche. I've come this close numerous times. So in this video, out of the blue, I was offered an extremely cheap Porsche Boxster. In fact, it is Britain's cheapest Boxster, a bargain, at under £2,000. I had to buy it unseen. And it turns out there's quite a few interesting parts to this car. So I'm gonna go and fetch it tomorrow morning. The alarm clock goes off at dawn and I'm off. Up to Yorkshire to collect it. MOT booked on that day. What could possibly go wrong? It's been sat in a, actually a real barn for over a year with intermittent electric faults. Come with me on this potentially ruinous journey. <laughs> I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. I'm never a passenger in a car these days. It's so hard to not fall asleep. It's so hard. One thing you can do before you purchase or even see a car, I haven't seen the Boxster yet, is you can run a comprehensive history check on the car using Car Vertical. I've gone onto the Car Vertical site here. I've added the VIN number in of my Boxster and immediately it brings up numerous things. It, it pulls together data from over a thousand different sources, over 25 different countries. It can tell you things like if there's any recorded thefts of that car, the odometer reading, it says here the last known mileage of the Boxster was 123,840 miles. And it gives you a graph actually, which shows you all the mileage going up. So that leads me to believe that that has not been altered. There's no outstanding finance on the car and the Boxster doesn't have any recorded damage. There's an illustration here, which would show you where that damage was. And it would also say what category that's classed as. For example, I'll bring up another Boxster, not mine, one that has been damaged and what that would look like. There's photographs of the car showing you how badly it's been damaged in a salvage yard there. And also it will tell you what category that's classed as. Just before you buy, then you know. Other stuff, it can give you things like the market value of the car, the emissions of the car, and also the specs. So the equipment that that specific car was born with to just see if it's changed from the original spec through any previous owners. Also give me information like in 2014, someone had a personalized number plate on it. So it had its reg plate changed. This is all really good information that you can do before you commit to buying a car or seeing a car. If you want to do it, I suggest you do. You can go to the description below and there's a discount code that you can enter in and you can run that and save yourself some money. We're definitely, we're in the right place because he's messaged to say, I'm in this barn at the end. There's a load of caravans and campers being stored here. I can't see the box there, but I presume it's somewhere at the end. Oakley, where are you? Hello? He's in the camper van. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, coffee. There Brilliant. You go. In the oh. Bit, mate. oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Well, there it is. Here it is. Is the Bodster? Shit. This looks like a proper faux barn find. It is, isn't it? Yeah. We've got the dust there. So it's got authentic it's, dust. It's got authentic dust, yeah. Goodness. It's in a barn. I know it's not relevant to the piece, but I love the uh, auto trailer patchy. Yeah, it's, it's Doldy. It's our baby. That's, it's... That's, that's peak motorhome era for me. Oh, me too. Me Just too. the right size. Well, bloody hell. So I'm really excited. I've been so excited. Oh, me too. It's just unbelievable. I feel like I'm living in, living in YouTube world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's what, mad. What, what, what we must, we, I must say this, I must say this to the viewers. Yeah. I was not, I was not actively looking for a Boxster right. at this time. No. But you'd know from maybe listening to the podcast, the Smith and Smith podcast, that I've, I've toyed with the idea of a, a ghetto Boxster, as we've called it. Yeah. Like an outlaw Boxster. Yeah. 
I sort of baited you in, didn't I? You baited me in. You just yeah. sent me a message going, I think I've got the perfect <laughs> ghetto boxer for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because we've been on in an hour, you know, what do we do with it? It's just sat here gathering dust. And uh, yeah, I kept hearing mentions of it on the podcast. Yeah. I just thought it's meant to be. But I didn't even know. I agreed to buy it before I kind of knew it, it appeared on another YouTube channel on Car Throttle. Yeah, exactly. So I had a bit of like prior connection with Alex Kirsten. I bought miles from him, the high mileage era. Yeah. Uh, and then he messaged me. I was out for a run one day and he messaged me saying, fancy a botster. And, uh, <laughs> so he lured you in? He lured me and I had no money. So I ran to my dad's house and I said, do you fancy a botster? <laughs> and I sort of talked him into it and he loved it. And, you know, he ran it for a summer or two. Brilliant time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just sat here since really. And not only that, has it already been on YouTube and been infamous, it came to our very first late break show on tour with you and your dad. It did indeed. Yeah, no, it was, it was for me and, me and my wife. We went down to London on the train, picked this up, and then drove straight to your first, yeah, first event. That's so cool. So it's come full circle. And I didn't know this, because that no. event was such a blur for me. Yeah. So this was there. We will put some pictures on screen of it attending yeah, the exactly. first thing. So, all right, I know it's on a space saver. Yeah, it's on a space saver. Because um, there was a damaged, there was a damaged tire and wheel. There was a damaged wheel by me when we went to the Trots Worlds. Yeah. Um, it, I crabbed it basically. Did you? Yes. Ba badly. Yes. Shit. Badly. Took a chunk out. I took a chunk out. Okay. I didn't tell my dad before driving home because it, uh, you know, the tire was holding, so we were okay. Oh sugar. Um, but there's a spare one in the front, a new one. So you sourced a second-hand matching rim, did you? Yeah. Yeah. But then it's just parts here, and we never put the never put a tire on it. Yeah. So yeah. It's on space saver. Um, it's had a Partial dust cover on, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, so, so you had a cover just there. I, you did send me a little video yep. proving that it ran. Yeah. Because I just wanted to prove that it ran. Exactly. So you had a little sort of like hood cover to stop birds from pecking it and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of pigeons in here, so we thought we'd protect this bit. Yeah. But the bodywork's been, been exposed. Um, what, why haven't you used it for a while? So it's got this weird issue. Very strange. First time you start it, every time, absolutely yep. fine. Yeah. 60% of the time, it works every time. If you then shut it off and go back to start it, it won't start. For how long? Varies. The oh, worst God. time I've had it was like an hour. <laughs> Wood all services. An hour, <laughs> right? Best probably five minutes. It's something electronic, in, you know, it's sort of in the brain. It's not yes. franking. Yep. It's just saying, nope, no more. So if I start it now, leave it running, and go for a drive? Absolutely fine. Right. Just don't stall and there'll be no problems. Oh gosh, yeah, stalling, I hadn't thought about it. Yeah. It, is, it, is a, it is a Manuel, uh, it is a Manuel Spanish gearbox. Yeah. Gosh, okay. So it's got that, which is very odd. Um, and really it just sort of put us off after that Woodall Services incident, when we were sat in the Starbucks feeling sad. Yeah. Um, we just haven't really used it. It's been, it's, you know, it's put us off. It's but what's since. really cool about it, I mean, obviously it's, it's it, uh, there might be a cheaper Boxster in Britain, but I think this is the cheapest Boxster in Britain. Yeah. I think so, now. I appreciate the fact that you've sold it to me at a wonderful price. Uh, and it, it's not shit. No, it's, it's not. It's not shit, is it? It's not shit. And it cleans up really nice. It looks good. Yeah. It drives nice. I, just... I bought it without any service history, but amazingly, you told me this morning when I woke up on text, I think I've actually found the service history. Yeah. Lo and behold, found this. This is great. <laughs> Because I was already thrilled. Yeah, it's just a little bonus, isn't it? It's a massive bonus. So we've got, I think, 12 stamps. Let me put my coffee down. Check this. Where, wh what part of the world did it come from? Ooh, when good it was question. New? Do you know, I'm always keen. I, mean, I love knowing when, where cars come from. Though. So first serviced in Cardiff. It was, it's Welsh. Welsh. My gosh, Phil, the videographer's getting excited. <laughs> I know it's a different region of Wales, but it's still Wales. And then up to Norwich. Wales to Norwich, so yeah. from west to east. Look at that. Yeah, so it's done 124,000. Yep. Last checked. And it has Porsche Specialist Service History up to, that's 120? It is, yeah. That's 120. So a few thousand things. And then that's the brake fluid changes, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sweet. I mean, you, you were very brave buying it on the assumption it had nothing, so. I bought it on the assumption it just, it, it, it ran on that video. Okay, got it outside for the first time in over a year, I think. Started fine with the jump. Um, super, super dusty, as you can tell. Hood looks fine though. We had the cover on that, so that's all good. Just needs a little scrub. <laughs> you can see where the cover ended. It didn't smoke. 
And I know Alex Kirsten hadn't ruined it. No. Uh, when he owned it. No, exactly. Which is a surprise. <laughs> Alex is really excited about the fact that it's... Is he? Yeah, the story continues. Yeah, it's nice. It's going back on, you know, back on YouTube, isn't it? And yeah. The story goes on. Anyway, I need to pay him <laughs> £1,900. <laughs> We've got an MOT booked in a couple of hours' time. So Fingers I want... Crossed. Yeah, and I've got... And I've reserved two tyres for the back because you can't MOT a car without matching tyres on the same axle. I looked that up last night. So uh, we're going to do that, and I'm probably not going to start it for a little while because then we've got to like, leave it going. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so wait till you're really ready to go, and then... You've got to be ready, ready. <laughs> this is wonderful. That's basically barn fine dust. That's barn fine boxster. It's a barn. That's not a lie. So before I proceed any further with a bargain boxster, I don't want to start it up and shut it off doing a short journey, I want to have a better look at it. So I'm going to push it around there. The reason why I don't want to start it and stop it quickly is because I know it has a intermittent fault, which Oakley's talked about and I knew it when I was buying the car. And this is the first Porsche I've ever bought. I, I'm just really excited. Just goes to prove you can get so much excitement from, a, from bargain cars. They don't have to be expensive purchases. So I've nearly bought several Porsches in my life. Years ago, I got offered a straight swap on my Mark 1 Granada Lowrider that I used to daily drive with a chap with a 928. And I was really sorely tempted, but I didn't because I couldn't afford the insurance. Fast forward. No, no, rewind. When I was at uni, I had this mad moment at uni, I was going to sell my Beetle, borrow a bit of money off my dad and buy a 912, a classic late 60s 912, because they were at the time three grand, four grand, uh, US import car, and I got that close, and I didn't, and I sort of regretted it, and now I don't, because I've still got the Beetle, which is blue, and I now have a Porsche, which is blue. One day, I'll own a 911, because it's the 60th anniversary, is it the 60th anniversary of the 911 this year? 60. It's the 75th anniversary of Porsche this year. And that's why in 24 hours time from this video, uh, from, from filming today, I'm going to be in America at Porsche's Ren Sport event, which celebrates 75 years of rear engine wonders. Anyway, let's have a look. Mr. Johnny Smith, so I hear that you've bought my old Porsche Boxster from the uh, car throttle days. All I can say is, Good luck, because when I left it, um, it had its issues. The roof was a little bit dodgy. The windows definitely didn't work. The starter motor squeaked. And to get the bonnet open, there was a little uh, a little cable that came out of one of the indicators or a fog light or something. It was quite rough around the edges. It was fairly high mileage. I'm guessing even more now. And I didn't pay a lot for it. So, Johnny, for the love of God, I hope you didn't pay more than like 1,500 quid for it. Because... It was ropey then, especially when I left it, and it's going to be even more ropey now. What I can say, though, is uh, one lady owner never tracked or raced. <laughs> Good luck. So I do know when I bought the car, having watched Alex Kirsten's video, I think what's happened is, is the module under the seat that will have got flood damage, because it does smell a little bit musty. When, it, when I say flood damage, it might have got caught in the rain with the roof down. The module stops the solenoid releasing on the bonnet and the boot, I think, but also the electric windows don't work. So I really, I need to source a second-hand module to remove those gremlins. Right, okay. So the battery's been on charge for the last 24 hours, but it's been sat dormant for a year. So I don't hold out massive hopes for it, which is a shame. This is what I care about here. Because Oakley said that one of the wheels was damaged, he sourced a matching second-hand one. Now, I don't like the style of these wheels, and I suspect that many Porsche Boxster owners don't like them. Do you know what they called this style of alloy wheel for the 986 Boxster? It was called the Boxster wheel. For those Germans with their creativity. 17, 17s all round. And this car was the last year, I think, this is a 2002 model, was the last year of the plastic back window. Then it went to glass, which is 
better. These go a bit milky and brittle, which is why you have to chop the back window when you're, um, when you're putting the, the hood down. Or you stop it halfway to get access to the engine bay, which I'm gonna do now. Two keys. Comes with two bloody keys. So normally you'd release the bonnet and the boot here, but they don't work on this car, hence those emergency cords. So again, I think that's linked to that module problem. And it does smell a bit damp in here. In the passenger door, little map pocket thing, there's what looks like uh, a pipe cleaner. And I think this has been used to rod out the drainage holes, which are a bit of a nemesis for um, boxsters, because if you don't do that and they get clogged up, the footwells can fill with water. And I think that's what's happened to it in the past. Right, I'm gonna look at the engine. To look at the engine on a Boxster, it's a bit of a faff. First thing you've got to do is get the hood partially moved. So ignition on, pull the big lever, make sure the handbrake's right up. Lovely manual handbrake. And then press the button for the hood. It's all new to me. This is all new to me. So you need it like this. Yes, like that, so there's a bit of slack in, in the system. Then we climb in here. I think I've spotted a problem. Then we, oh shit. We do the box to chop. And this bag needs to be unclipped. If this doesn't go back, bloody MOT's in an hour. Oh, for sake. Who put the engine in the middle? Yes. Yes, like that. I'm making an absolute dog's dinner of this. Never, never done this before. I've only seen it on a tutorial. Right, so there's your covered in barn fine dust. That's your little cubby from the back. Another clip, you, you twist and turn. This piece of padded carpet soundproofing should come out, I think. This is the engine bay. This is cool. I've got kind of new, I've got new car excitement, but also nerves because um, it's a lot of unknowns with this car. Right, just like the bonnet, the boot area has got uh, no way of releasing it. The solenoid system is dead. Again, I think it's that module. So you go under the rear arch, there's an emergency release, just a cable, and this is your boot area. Of course, being a box does so much, blimmin' storage. And also, this is the first generation of water called Porsches, remember? This and the 996, 911. Same headlights pr practically. That was a real gripe for 911 owners because a Porsche would come up behind people and people would think that it was a 911 when it was actually a Boxster. So, but this is how you top it up and check it for oil and coolant. Coolant levels down there, oil's here, but you've got to check the oil really when it's at working temperature. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start it up in a sec. This is a very very my gosh, this is the longest. It, <laughs> This is the longest. So no viewers, I'm not checking this as kosher when it's cold. Uh, I will just, I just want to look at the color of the oil, really. The age of the oil, if I can. I, this, it doesn't get cheaper. A flat six engined Porsche doesn't, can't get cheaper than a Boxster. And I prefer a Boxster to a sort of, to a 996, controversially. Well, there's oil in it, and I'm gonna, I will check the oil level when I get to the MOT station. Now I know what I know about this, this engine, this car being a bit funny about being started and stopped. Oh, I don't wanna run out of fuel. So I'm gonna put some fuel in it and probably put a gallon or two in it so I can leave it idling for a while. I do not want to run out of petrol en route because if it doesn't start, then I'm snookered. Of course, the car doesn't have an MOT at the moment. You can drive a car to an MOT station without an MOT as long as it's booked and as long as you are insured. 
You can't tax a car until it's MOT'd. So, number of former keepers, nine. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a 20 year old car, but because I've done all the checks with car vertical, and because I've now seen it's got service history, I know it's not a crashed Porsche. Obviously I'm not paying much money for it in the grand scheme of things. So it puts my mind to rest. And I've checked the brake fluid, and brake fluid's really good condition and full. And that's because the last MOT it had, which took place in September 2021, expired almost exactly a year ago today. It had new brake lines fitted front and rear. Quite an expensive job. 550 quid nearly to do that, fit a new core spring which had fractured um, and obviously replace the brake fluid. So I know that's quite a major job and that's been done. So really what, what is known is that weird intermittent fault with that module under the passenger seat which stops the windows from working and means sometimes you can't restart it after turning it off quickly. I can live with that as long as it passes an MOT today, because I don't have a plan B to get home and it's my son's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing like living on the edge. Right, I, I don't even know what it sounds like. I've heard it in a little video that Oakley sent to me. So moment of truth. Let's try and see if she fires fine. No. <laughs> Why does it not fire? It's not firing at all. Why is that though? Oh, sugar, sugar. Right, battery, I think the battery's wanked. Gonna go get my jump pack. Oh, shit. Right, put the jump pack on, let's just see. Let's hope. No. Absolutely nothing. Why? Okay, so this was starting to get really frustrating and confusing. I knew I was buying a car with a fault, but one thing I was told was that it always started first thing, always. The problems normally arose when you turned it off and tried to turn it back on again subsequently. But even if we put good power through it with various different jump packs, I tried jump starting it using Phil's diesel Mazda. I tried jump starting it using uh, the camper van, both running and not running. And then we tried to turn it over with no other batteries on it apart from the weak battery that it had. And we did get it to turn over and that's about it. It was really, really confusing. As, as Oakley said, got nothing to lose. I don't think this will solve its weird problem, but right. Go, 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 go. Right, three. No. No. So I should have been at my original MOT two hours ago. The, the local guys at the garage who run the MOTs, they know these chaps. They gave me a second slot. We've missed that. Third slot, we'll, we, got, we need to be there in 10 minutes. I'm absolutely baffled. And I'm quite, quite annoyed. Because I, I, I want to try something else, but I don't know what to try. You win some, you lose some. I, I, I'm not saying we've lost. Not yet. I'm that close to getting a lift home. It was both confusing and also disheartening. But we did strike success when Oakley's dad fetched an OBD reader off the shelf, brought it over, I tried that, cleared the codes which didn't seem to exist because it didn't say it had a fault. And sure enough, this is what happened. We're going to go for a fire up, he says ambitiously. so much work to get this far today. What's weird is 
the fault code reader is saying no faults, no codes. But when I clear, when I clear it, it ran. So it's telling me there's no problem, but there is a problem, clearly. This is the most mysterious car fault I've ever known. It's, it's beyond my amateur mechanic know-how. Anyway, it's running. Is the MOT sensor still open? If I buy him a case of beer, will he open? I'm serious. It's just, he's gonna phone it. Sounds absolutely lovely. Lovely. No smoke, no alien sounds, it just sounds wonderful. So it's a bittersweet day. At least I've actually got to hear the flat six. I own a flat six. We've missed, we've missed the MOT station. It's closed. So annoying. So the car has a bamboozling electrical gremlin, which, which I knew. And this is the roulette wheel of buying cheap cars unseen. I know that, I know that. And that's part of the thrill of the chase. It's part of what we love. It comes with its risks. And so I've proved that the car runs and I like it. There's a lot to like here. It's a good condition. It's nearly full service history car, um, but I can't drive it home in the, the setting sun that you can see coming through the barn window. I was hoping to get a bit of wind through my male pattern baldness. Alas, not tonight. So I think I'll come back. I want to say thank you to Car Vertical for supporting this video. Uh, thanks to you for watching it. And if you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? We sell merch on the Late Break Show. I'll put a link below for that. And remember, there's a discount code for Car Vertical in the description below. I hope, I hope we can drive this home at some point soon. The cheapest Boxster in Britain, surely. Thanks for watching. I've got to get a lift home now. Shit. <laughs>